The biggest story in financial markets today is that BlackRock, the biggest asset manager in the world with $7 trillion under management, has decided that sustainability is going to be front and centre for its business. Do you think we are reaching the point where the, the rate of change towards the end of the oil, uh, the oil era is really starting to accelerate? And what does that mean for Norway? Well, first of all, I don't think uh, the era of oil and gas production is over. I think actually uh, those of us that produce with low emissions is part of the solution and not part of the problem. Uh, these are companies uh, highly innovative and through techno technological development uh, that makes it also uh, um, uh, possible for these companies to invest in renewable energy and uh, being part of uh, even future solutions when it comes to renewable energy production. Do you think the rates have changed though? Do you think we've reached the tipping point? Big asset managers now see uh, fossil fuels as toxic. They don't want to invest. You can see this in, in money pouring out of the big oil companies around Europe. What does it mean? What do, you, what do you take away from the fact that the biggest asset manager in the world has decided that, that this is its business now, that this is the process that it needs to take a bigger and bigger part in? Well, I think uh, all companies, uh, basically all over the world, is, is um, occupied with uh, this, with uh, having a green profile, being part of uh, reducing emissions. Uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, something that all companies are involved in, and I think it's a good thing. Uh, but I still think that we need to look at the bigger picture. Uh, the world will uh, demand energy, more energy, in the years to come, and we need to look at the global energy mix. And uh, for now, I think that uh, gas, for instance, is a better solution than coal. So uh, as long as uh, the gas prices can compete, uh, it's a good thing for reducing emissions uh, in Europe and globally. The Norwegian krona has been weak for quite some time, Minister, and it's hard for people to come up with an explanation for this because it stayed the case even after oil prices recovered. What's your interpretation? I think it's actually a bit difficult to interpret that, uh, but we have a floating currency and we are we used to uh, the fact that the, our currency is uh, floating up and down, sometimes um, equivalent with the movements in, uh, in oil prices, but for now it is not uh, correlating with the movements in oil prices. Uh, I think maybe it has to do with the fact that we have a lot of uncertainty in the global economy for the time being. Speaking of that, Brexit withdrawal is actually looking a little smoother now as a country that has negotiated a deal with the European Union on your own terms. How do you see the UK's trading relationship with the EU in the future and with Norway? Well, uh, I think, as you said, we know a little bit more about the outcome of Brexit, but there is still a lot of aftermath to be dealt with. I think... Uh, all of us are seeking to negotiate all the necessary bilateral agreements we need to do with the UK. But uh, UK is a huge country within uh, Europe, will be part of uh, European trade uh, for decades to come. So I think the most important thing is that the, the transition period is calm and that we all seek to reach uh, good agreements bilaterally. Minister, um the Chinese and the Americans are going to sign a trade deal this week at the same time that Commissioner Hogan, the EU's trade minister, is in Washington, D.C. A lot of people are talking about the fact that Europe may be next and that a trade war with the United States could happen in 2020. Given that you are not part of that, um, th that EU, ha but, but you are close to it, how will Norway play this process? How will you uh, avoid getting kind of caught in the middle? Well, I think this is one of the biggest uncertainties uh, uh, that we see for the time being, uh, the ongoing trade war. And that's um, bad news for small open economies like the Norwegian. So I think that my, my <laughs> best hope for 2020 is that we see more open trade and not less. And that uh, we all make sure that we uh, have 
a good multilateral trading system uh, working for us. So hopefully trade tensions will cool down. Uh, at least that's my wish for, for, for this year. Uh, but uh, we will we take part in uh, uh, all the negotiations that go on to ensure that uh, our own interests are taken care of us uh, in the best way possible. The US and France are still negotiating, talking of trade, uh, about the digital, digital tax. Um, Davos apparently is the deadline. Um, if, it, if it comes down to it, where does Norway sit in this process? Um, because you have, you have indicated in the past that you would follow France in imposing a digital sales tax uh, if no agreement could be reached. I, how do you see this whole process unfolding? Well, uh, the OECD has stated very clearly that uh, the ambition is to reach um, an agreement within this year. Uh, my hope is, uh, of course, that we will be able to, uh, to have successful uh, conclusions in the negotiations, because I think that's uh, the best way to deal with uh, the situation. I think uh, it's a suboptimal solution to have uh, unilateral uh, measures uh, taken. What I have said is that my primary goal uh, is to invest um, uh, my energy in seeking a multilateral solution. And if it fails, then we will have to look into other options. Yes, you have said that Norway would follow France in imposing unilateral fines and, and strictures and taxes and so on. Are you worried about US retaliation, Minister Jensen? Well, first of all, I, uh, I uh, put a lot of trust in the ongoing no negotiations between France and the US. Hopefully, uh, we will see a good outcome of this, and I think that's my primary focus by now. If it fails, then I think that all of us need to look into other measures, other steps to take. But I also have to add that tax is just one part of the big picture, because we really need to focus more uh, on competition uh, issues as well. These are huge uh, global uh, monopolies uh, and I think that we should worry more about uh, competition issues uh, because of course it's important to tax these companies fairly uh, but we also need to make sure uh, as from a consumer perspective uh, that uh, competition is working better in the future. Your sovereign wealth fund is enormous. It's now reached 10 trillion krona or 1.1 billion US dollars. As markets continue to go up, that gives you more ability to spend percentage-wise over state budgets. But markets may not go up forever. Are you concerned about that? No, I think we have set up a very responsible management of the fund and it's invested broadly, diversified globally. Uh, and it has served us well for a long period of time. Uh, and we are only seeking to spend the expected uh, real return from one year to another. And of course, uh, looking into uh, how the Norwegian economy is performing as well. But this is uh, a good sa savings vehicle for the Norwegian people. Uh, and if we spend it wisely and invest it wisely, uh, I think that we, if we will um, be very fortunate with having such a huge fund uh, for many generations to come.